there's a very compelling hypothesis that's coming out of all this work that some degree of the endothelial dysfunction that happens in insulin resistance may be due to nitric oxide inhibition, ENOS, endothelial nitric, ox nitric oxide synthase inhibition, et cetera. There's a connection between nitric oxide and insulin resistance, and it happens across multiple studies. And this is another one that I think really ties it together quite intriguingly. The title of this study is Citrulline and Non-Essential Amino Acids Prevent Fructose-Induced Non-Alcoholic Fatty Liver Disease in Rats. So in rats and mice, if we overfeed or if we feed with fructose, you will see non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, also known as NAFLD. But if they supplement these rats with citrulline and non-essential amino acids, what they get is an improvement in arginine metabolism. Well, what does citrulline and arginine do in the human body? One of their biochemical roles is to be precursors for nitric oxide. So it appears that one of the mechanisms by which fructose may, in, may yeah, induce a harmful, a pathological effect in humans at the level of the endothelium and perhaps at the level of the liver leading to NAFLD or endothelial dysfunction involves disordered nitric oxide metabolism, disordered ENOS. And this can be rescued if we affect nitric oxide metabolism positively, either by giving fructose with foods or as a part of a whole food matrix that probably has nitric oxide precursors and mitigate this effect, or we actually give the non-essential amino acids and citrulline which are the precursors for nitric oxide. So read the conclusion here. In our rat model, citrulline and non-essential amino acids effectively prevented fructose-induced NAFLD. On the basis of literature data and findings, we propose that non-essential amino acids may exert their effects specifically on the liver, where citrulline presumably acts at both the hepatic and whole body level, in part via improved peripheral arginine metabolism connected with nitric oxide. The last part is what I'm adding there. So you can find here a really compelling hypothesis to be generated connecting all of these things, connecting nitric oxide, connecting end endothelial nitric oxide synthase, connecting endothelial dysfunction, connecting NAFLD, non-alcoholic body liver disease, and fructose in the absence of compounds that prevent this happening. But what we see repeatedly, fructose in a whole food matrix doesn't seem to behave the same way in humans. Incidentally, go back to the previous podcast I did with Malcolm Kendrick from a few years ago, we talked about atherosclerosis. What did we find? Endothelial dysfunction, ENOS, nitric oxide. These are at the center of atherosclerosis as well. What do we also know? Insulin resistance is at the center of atherosclerosis as well. That is what I believe causes atherosclerosis at the very, very, very beginning of all of it is not elevated LDL, is not elevated cholesterol. It is metabolic dysfunction, aka insulin resistance. And I believe that one of the key mechanisms by which that insulin resistance may be leading to atherosclerosis is by causing endothelial dysfunction. Endothelial dysfunction is really probably the first or second effect, the first or second um, really step in the process of atherosclerosis. I believe you must have endothelial dysfunction to have, to have atherosclerosis. Without endothelial dysfunction, I believe that LDL is not a problem for humans at all. It's a valuable molecule that moves steroid precursors that moves hormones, that moves triglycerides and cholesterol around the body, that is involved in the immune response and interrupts quorum sensing from bacteria. Without endothelial dysfunction, LDL will not become a problematic molecule, will not become a part of an atherosclerotic plaque. This is why we don't get atherosclerosis in veins, but we only see it in arteries in a normal human individual because the arteries are a higher pressure system. And at the branch points, there is turbulence, which can create some endothelial dysfunction, some shredding, some shearing stress, and that creates the beginning of an atherosclerotic plaque. I think that what happens generally is that we must develop insulin resistance, not that we want to develop insulin resistance, but a human must develop insulin resistance, aka metabolic dysfunction for that endothelial dysfunction to persist and for that LDL to become wrapped up in an atherosclerotic plaque. Again, this is connected with nitric oxide synthase, endothelial cells, ENOS, et cetera. Fructose may contribute to this in isolation, but when we feed it with foods in a food matrix, we see repeatedly that this does not happen. So this is connected with atherosclerosis. This is connected with insulin resistance. This is connected with metabolic dysfunction. And if you heard the podcast with Malcolm Kendrick, what we also talked about was that one of the effects of statins is to improve nitric oxide synthesis in the endothelium. In fact, this may be one of the most effective pleiotropic effects of statins. Statins do lower LDL by interrupting the enzyme HMG coA reductase, but what if the actual effect of statins, the actual protective benefit of statins in 
secondary prevention in people who have had a heart attack comes from improving nitric oxide synthesis at the level of the endothelium. That's fascinating. I don't believe it means we should always use statins. Look, if you're not going to make dietary changes, medications are all you got. But if it tells us what the statins are doing that is helpful, then we should understand the dietary interventions that we can do to improve endothelial health. And what do we know about those? Well, we know that citrine, citrulline, non-essential amino acids, arginine, endothelial nitric oxide synthase, nitric oxide precursors, these are critical for a healthy endothelium. I believe organs and meat are a huge part of that. Fruit is not going to hurt that, as we've seen in many of these studies, and in fact may actually improve it. So I do not think that it is worth it. I do not think it is correct to fear fructose in the food matrix. But a lot of people ask me, what about maple syrup? Well, think about it. Honey is better. The more raw it is, the darker it is, the less processed it is. Because the more you heat the honey, the more you degrade those nitric oxide precursors, the more you degrade the chemicals that are probably involved in the process of preserving ENOS activity. Maple syrup is collected and heated and heated and heated. Maple syrup is a pretty processed sugar in my view. So I'm not a fan of maple syrup in the same way that I am a fan of honey. I'm throwing in these little questions that I get all the time in here. And hopefully you guys are picking up what I am putting down.